Hey everybody, Ethan here from WordTech, back with another video. It's been a, a long time coming of a lot of testing for this one here. So uh, this here is my Model F keyboard. It's a 60% base. They do have the 77 key model available as well. Now, before I actually jump into the review, I want to say first, uh, huge thanks to the project and, the, and everybody that's worked on this project. It's been a long time coming, uh, and I, I just I think it's amazing to be reviving what is potentially one of the best keyboards ever, and I'll, I'll get more into that in the review. So if you're interested in hearing the story about how this happened and about how the production went and stuff like that, definitely check out the link in the description. I've got a link to the page down there for these keyboards. I would recommend going to like the updates section and just reading through some of that stuff because it's really interesting. And then you can also purchase one there if you have any interest in getting a keyboard like this. Now, first thing I'll say is, yeah, I did go with the beige style keyboard, and this is to make it stand out in the rest of my setup and any other area that I bring it. Now, it has blank keycaps, and that's also intentional. I don't uh, like lettering on, on keys, even if it's in a way that it doesn't rub off or anything like that. I prefer to have just blank keycaps. So um, that's what I went with with this setting, with this keyboard here, and I think it looks fantastic over my setup. It's, you know, actually kind of surprising how nice it looks. So, um, but, it, but it stands out, you know, people will ask questions about it and stuff like that if they see it in pictures. So uh, that makes it totally worth it, in my opinion. So um, now to start off the review, and spoiler alert, the thing is amazing, you should totally get one, but but to start off the review, I, I have a lot of good things to talk about it, and I'm going to go through my standards of going over the build quality, going over what the actual use is like and stuff. Uh, there are a few downsides, though, and I want to throw some of those out here right now. So the first thing is that it will take you a while to get it if you order it right now. Not necessarily a super long time. You know, I ordered this one over two years ago, um, and that was because it they hadn't had any of them finished at that point. Uh, but even so, if you order one now, it could take a while. So you definitely need to be patient. And these are not cheap. They're in the realm of realm of $400 to $500. You can get them about $350-ish, depending on your configuration. Um, so just keep that in mind, too. These are not cheap keyboards. Now, they do sell a lot of replacement parts and stuff like that for them. I would recommend picking up like some of their healthcare packages that they have for it in case you ever have problems in the future when it's out of warranty and you know the project isn't going on anymore and stuff like that, that you can do some repairs yourself. Now, the only other complaint that I have, and this uh, your mileage may vary with this. I did have some issues with it when I first got it. It wasn't plug and play out of the box. Uh, it was not working at all when I plugged it in actually and so um, I had to install some software and flash a new uh, firmware over to this and then things started working again there's a few settings that had to be tweaked now there's a lot of people online to help you with that I also emailed the uh, project directly their support line and got a response super fast uh, on how to actually go about fixing it and it was it was really easy once you get used to it it's just a few applications that you have to run um, install a few things flash the new ROM, which you can get from them, and then it's it's ready to go again. And I haven't had a single issue with it since then. It's been like straight up flawless. So that's just a little bit of uh, advice if you do plan to order one and kind of you know jumping into it initially, you may experience a few quirks like that that you have to go through and deal with to get it, get it working. But I think it's 100% worth it for this keyboard. Now, the first thing I'll talk about when it comes to the keyboard itself and um, the unboxing experience is actually the first thing that I want to go over here. And it's unique because it is very similar to uh, some of the original boxes for these keyboards. And uh, the unboxing experience was just awesome. It was packed really well. It had everything in there that you would want. And uh, it also has a dot matrix printed receipt. And so that was really cool too. I actually framed that on my wall. Love it. Uh, it's really awesome. So I think that was a great attention to detail there. And um, you know, the I, I don't think I really would have any concerns about this getting damaged in shipping or in general because I mean, the thing is heavy. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it, this is a solid, solid metal and there's metal plating inside and stuff like that. So it's not going to be breaking or anything like that anytime soon. But um, the, pa <clears throat> the packaging was really good. The only thing I experienced during the unboxing that I didn't like was that some of the keycaps were kind of like weirdly a jar and I had to take them out and put them back in. Totally not a big deal at all, but just something to be aware of if some of your keys like aren't going down or something like that, uh, it's it's really easy to fix. It's just they, in shipping, the, um, the buckling spring inside can get dislodged. So the unboxing experience was great. And then to start talking about the keyboard itself, uh, buckling springs actually leads straight into that. So for those that don't know, um, that maybe do understand mechanical keyboards to an extent, um, this is a little bit different than what you would get from something like a uh, Razer or a Cherry based Switch keyboard. Um, and in my opinion, it's substantially better for everything except maybe gaming. Uh, I'll get to that a little bit later. Um, but 
Buckling Springs are a really unique feel and a really unique sound. So they're particularly noisy and they have a lot of uh, uh, tactile feedback, as they call it, or whatever term you want to use for that. And so in my opinion, it's a better typing experience than even typing on um, like the best of the best of uh, other forms of mechanical switches, even like a... Uh, the kale box switches and stuff like that that are more tactile than what cherry offers it's still not like ideal in my opinion and this is a like far and away buckling spring is just better and you can get a buckling spring keyboard for actually about 90 bucks from unicomp uh, they're manufacturing them with the same tooling and stuff that ibm manufactured the model m keyboard with long ago and I have several of those that I actually still use, and they're a great typing experience, a huge up over anything else that I typed on uh, that's using traditional switches, but uh, you know, and only 90 bucks. So like that's a more reachable for some people. You can get it right away, that kind of thing. Um, but in my opinion, the Model F is just far and away way better. It is a little bit lighter to type on. I actually feel less fatigue when typing on this if I'm doing like a really long uh, article or something like that that I'm typing, and the Model F sounds crisper and cleaner, and the reason for this is because the, the flipper inside that the spring is actually pushing down is hitting a capacitive PCB instead of uh, pushing down a membrane on a PCB, and so it makes it a little bit of a crisper sound, a crisper feel. Um, I'll have some sound comparisons at the end of this video, or, or maybe not comparisons, but at least sound of, of this. I don't think I have a Model M in my basement right now, but anyway. Um, so just a fantastic design, and um, you know, be, before I get into build quality, because that is something I want to touch on here, I'll, I'll just I'll just continue with the typing experience. Has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, basically, no complaints. There there is one little one is the um, the left shift key here. For some reason, when you press on it at the edge, it it doesn't um, it like gets. Uh, I can't remember the term for it. It gets it gets kind of stuck, right? And so it's it feels uh, you feel some resistance. And I don't know if that's something that everybody with the Model F will experience. It's only enough that it's annoyed me like maybe two times or three times where I've I've hit that edge and felt that I had to push down really hard to to get the shift key to work. And so I've maybe missed a shift key once in a while. But generally, you're tapping more on the middle or further over, and then it's 100% fine. There's absolutely no issues at all. It's just that type, tapping on the very edge of it, you can feel it kind of getting getting like grinding, getting stuck. Um, and I'm not 100% sure why that is. It might be fixable. I need to look into it a little more, but that's something I wanted to throw out there that I've experienced that wasn't as simple as just taking the keycap off and back on. Um, there's something in there that's causing it to bind up a little bit, but I mean, it still goes down. It's not like it's, um, you know, some membrane keyboards and other keyboards in general get really badly stuck and, and they bind really bad and it's hard to type on. It's nothing like that. It's still good enough. Like you just have to give it a little more force. So that's why I'm saying it's only actually bugged me a couple of times where I've maybe missed a capital letter in something. Uh, uh, generally speaking, it's fine, even if I am hitting it there. And the one other thing is uh, gaming. I did mention that a little bit ago. I don't prefer gaming on Buckling Spring in general, personally, and the heavier tactile switch mechanical keyboards. Now, I personally use a game board. I use a rather odd one. It's the uh, Azeron, which I'll try and throw a picture of b-roll of that up but um that's what i use for gaming i don't really use the keyboard for gaming uh it's just i feel more fatigue and stuff like that from it being a heavier keyboard i feel like i can't react as quickly and so that's my personal opinion it doesn't mean that you can't game on it it doesn't mean that you're going to have key rollover issues or anything like that it is perfectly usable i have spent some time gaming on it um but just just know that if you don't like the heavier switches for for using um you know, WASD uh, for gaming, it, it might become fatiguing after a while. So that's something to keep in mind. But my personal opinion and recommendation is to just use a game board anyway. Um, I prefer using game boards. They are more ergonomic. They're better for you long term. They have more features, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that's always been my preference. But that's something for you to keep in mind here. Um, now, regarding the rest of the typing experience on this, it actually has been super, super fantastic. I love it. It is, it is honestly, it's like, it's like the leap of going from like Cherry MX Browns to like a Model M is like almost an equivalent leap of going from a Model M to a Model F like this. It's just a fantastic typing experience. It sounds better. It feels better. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to describe without you, you know, actually feeling it, but I love it and will never be going back. And in fact, I'm going to be ordering another one of these that I can use for work. And I'm maybe even considering a third just in case I ever catastrophically break one or something like that. I can have a new one like in box that I can, you know, use uh, in case the, you know, the project's going to be gone eventually, right? And say 10 years from now, this thing breaks, even then it's still unlikely considering it's build quality more on that in a moment. But, you know, it'd be nice to have an extra one. I do the same thing with my Logitech G600 mouse. I have like 
eight of them or something like that, brand new in box in case I break them because they're probably going to be discontinued soon. Um, so it's just a fantastic typing experience. Now, I like the 60% layout. This does have function keys on the 60% layout. So if you hold your right control key here, that is actually basically your function key. You do the F keys here. You've got like home and page up, page down. And I've gotten pretty used to using some of those. And so I don't really have any trouble with using the arrow keys or anything like that. Um, but that is something to keep in mind for a 60% keyboard. I like something smaller. So I have more room for my mouse, more room for my game board and my other stuff. My desk setup has a lot of stuff on it. And so the smaller the keyboard I can get, the better, but I don't really like anything smaller than a 60%. So this is like perfect for what I'm doing, um, but they do make one that has a number row. Now it is not a full size keyboard with your arrow keys and your nav cluster and then a number row. Uh, it's just the additional number row. So it's a 77 key instead of a 60 key. And uh, that one I think is uh, fine for people that are maybe doing a lot of data entry and prefer not to use the number row for their data entry, but instead want to use, uh, you know, an actual number pad or they want, you can configure it to have the nav cluster over there instead or something like that with your arrow keys and your home and end and all that. So if you like something a little bit bigger, you can do that. It's, it's equal in quality. So this review still applies to that keyboard. Um, and so you can definitely, again, check out the link in the description if you want to see the different options there and you can get lots of custom colors and stuff like that too, uh, which is awesome. Awesome. And so the, the thing I'll touch on now is, is aesthetics before we get into the build quality. So aesthetics like is, is more customizable than obviously IBM and stuff offered originally when this was developed. And um, you can get this standard one that's very similar to the one IBM made. In fact, it's basically identical um, where it has the, the solid metal uh, box and everything like that. Or you can get one that's a little bit smaller, um, that's a little bit more traditional keyboard looking if you want. And that's a newer custom one, but it uses the same switches. I prefer the original design. I like the uh, slightly extra padding here, even though I do like smaller keyboards. I do like this. Um, now you can customize the color of both it and your keycap to an extent. There are, I think, six color options. They're pretty nice. Um, they're, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for my next one. I might actually order a, a different color one. And so if that's the case, I'll do a short video on that one when I get it. But um, they have like red, black, blue, uh, several other colors. And then you can do some coloring on your keycaps as well. And of course, you can put a ledger, you know, lettering on your keycaps if that's what you want to do as well. But um, Blank keycap ones, from my understanding, are still ones that you would get faster. So that's also something to keep in mind if you are wanting one right away. But um, yeah, lots of cool, interesting colors. I really do like that they have a lot of color options. You know, that's not something you could do long ago or getting one of these old ones off eBay or something like that, which they're expensive there too, of course. Uh, you couldn't do any coloring on them unless you wanted to take it apart and paint it yourself. So I really do appreciate that they're offering colors for it to match some people's setups. I, again, like the beige just because it stands out because nothing else in any of my setups, at, whether it's at work or here, have this beige style. So it makes people ask questions and stuff like that. So I might just get another beige one exactly like this. I'm not really sure yet, but super awesome. I love it. So the design is great. And uh, that kind of flows into the build quality now. So this thing is amazing. Now, one thing I do want to touch on that's a difference from the original is it does have a very nicely braided high quality cable. It is pretty long, which I do think to an extent is important to have a long cable. Um, it, you know, it's pretty durable. I do, it doesn't have like a nice stress relief for the USB cable there or something. So you don't want to just like, you know, tug on it a lot or have a lot of strain on it, but it is a very nice high quality cable. So I like to see that they're offering that. Um, it's, it's different than the original and really is nice. Now, regarding the rest of it, it is incredibly durable, uh, both from the paint job to the entire build itself, to the keycaps thing weighs a ton. Uh, you know, it is genuine. Like you pick it up, it will be one of the heaviest keyboards you've ever picked up. Uh, it's just fantastic build quality back to the original, you know, IBM style build quality. It is pretty much identical internally and externally when it comes to the build. And I think that's also fantastic. Uh, you know, it, keyboards back in that time tended to last longer. They were less plasticky and cheap. And I feel like newer keyboards just kind of fall apart. I've had so many keycaps break on like my Logitech keyboards because they all use ABS keycaps instead of PBT, which is just like gross. Um, so I, I really appreciate what they've done here in regards to the build quality. And the paint job is pretty great quality too. Now I did have one incident. Uh, I'll try and see if I can get this on B-roll, but there's a little tiny like nick right up here. And that was not there originally. So I do want to say that, that was my fault. I actually dropped my phone on the keyboard and it nicked the paint a little bit there. So that was not there originally. Uh, and I haven't had any other troubles. I have 
like bumped it with things like smacked it with my mouse on the side and stuff like that and never had paint chip off. I think it was just a particularly bad spot to hit it and why I have the paint chip there. There weren't any on this when I first got it though. So I will say that the quality control is also very good. You know, all the keycaps and everything worked. I didn't have any issues where I had to replace something. Uh, so that was really awesome as well. It's, it's built like a tank. You know, this is a keyboard that's not going to move around on your desk. You're not going to break anything. And speaking of moving around, you can put feet on it. It can come with feet. Uh, in fact, I think it, yeah, it does come with feet and uh, I just didn't put them on there because I don't need it because I put this on a mouse pad so it doesn't slide at all anyway. Uh, but you know, it's, it's just, it's so heavy duty. You can beat this thing up in terms of typing, which like my typing style is really loud. I hit the keys really hard and this I know is going to be, you know, long lasting and I can be confident that it's going to work well for a long time. So I think that alone makes it worth it over a lot of other mechanical keyboards. You know, not only does it feel better, sound better, type better, etc., but it's that, that that longevity that you can get out of these style of keyboards uh, versus other keyboards you know if they only last you a year and this thing lasts you a decade then all of a sudden it's like well the 120 bucks you might spend on a normal mechanical keyboard or even 50 bucks this is still a better value to get something that's you know four hundred dollars that lasts longer so it's it's really awesome and um I, I just i don't have a lot of negatives to say about it honestly i mean as we, as we ease into the conclusion here it's it's just it's a fantastic keyboard. I would highly recommend it to anybody. I have no complaints. You know, I was, I was uh, skeptical or worried that maybe it would get mega delayed or there'd be issues with it or something like that when I first ordered, but I really, really wanted one. I didn't want to miss out on the opportunity. So I ordered a single one, uh, hoping that it wouldn't have any problems. And here we are, no problems, great support, uh, great, great project. I just think it's amazing that they're bringing it back. And at this point now I'm comfortable buying another one or two of these to keep around. Um, and I, I would just, I would recommend anybody that has the interest and wants to spend the money or has the money to spend should go ahead and just, just do it. You will not regret it. It's a wonderful keyboard. And you know, anybody else out there that that his review Model F's has talked about them being amazing, and this is just as amazing as the original Model F, except you also have color options if that's what you want, which is super awesome. So thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Uh, if you have any questions, leave you know comments down below. And if you have a plethora of them, you know, I might make another video doing a Q&A on this keyboard. Uh, I've used it for about three months now too, I should say that. So you know, I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on how well it's lasting, how, how good it's holding up. The feeling hasn't changed or anything like that. So a little disclaimer there, I have had it a while. This is not just a week into it or something like that. So uh, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe. Seriously, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you want to see any more information on this keyboard. And let me know if you'd be interested in seeing like a different colored one because I'm still not sure what I'm going to order. So maybe if enough people want to see what the more unique colors look like, I can order one of those and do a, a follow-up video on one of those. So because uh, I'm, I'm really indecisive about the coloring right now. So uh, again, thank you, everybody, and I will see you all in the next one.